we're excited today to share an update on how you can use ScienceLogic's automation engine for AI ops to extend your APM reach. And I've invited John Wilsey, our senior solution architect, to join me today and help with explaining how the, the solution works. Thank you, Leslie. All right. Before we get started here, I want to remind everyone that the foundational elements around ScienceLogic's platform is that we can collect data from any technology, any vendor, anywhere. And we can use a variety of techniques to feed that data into a data lake. We then add context to that data to drive AI-assisted automations and actions. Things like automating your incident management process, synchronizing a CMDB, remediating issues, as well as understanding impact on services and automating root cause analysis. When we talk about extending APM reach, there's really two ways that we approach it. One is to do it natively within ScienceLogic, and the other is to integrate with a third-party APM. Today, we're going to focus on uh, our native approach. So, John, can you tell us a little bit about our native approach to APM? Certainly. So, we have a ability to go ahead and instrument the server instances that make up your applications. And from that, we can go ahead and determine two critical things. We can understand how those server instances communicate with each other, as well as which application, or we call them application components. Uh, some folks might call it like a tier of an application. Mm -hmm. But essentially we can understand which of these server instances belong to which different application tiers. And as you may know, servers can actually be made up or serve multiple different systems. Right, right, which makes it very complicated if you're only looking at a single application at a time. It's very important to be able to look at multiple applications using a, a single platform like ours. Yeah. Right, okay, great. Well, why don't you uh, show us uh, you know, how the uh, product works here? All right, so here on the screen, what we have is a visual map that is showing how the application has been defined. We have an application that's made up of multiple tiers, mm -hmm. and these multiple tiers, in this case, this fairly simple application. There's a web tier, there's a database tier, load balancing tier, and each of those is made up of several different server instances. So in this case, the web tier is made up of three servers. In the future, that could suddenly spin up to six, nine, 10, and we'll go ahead and pick that up right away and update this this uh, visual map in real time. That's great, John. So can you, you know, show us how the application then relates to the infrastructure that's underlying it? Absolutely, I'll show you that next. All right, so here in this view, what we have is we can now see that the web tier is made up of those three web servers that we saw on the previous uh, screen. And also the database tier is made up of a few of the database mm -hmm. servers. Now there's some color coding going on here that represents the health and or severity of something that's happening on those particular systems. So I'm gonna drill into the most severe in each environment here. Okay. All right, so it's expanded out and we start to see a lot of icons or different nodes as we call them on the, mm -hmm. on the map. And it looks a bit complex, but that's okay. Uh, IT's kind of messy. This is the map showing for the very specific things we drilled into, what are they communicating with? Okay. From their perspective, what are all the things that they're impacting or what are the things that they're being impacted by? Okay. So for instance, here we can see that that web server is communicating, it's connected to that database server. So when someone hits a web page, pulls down some information, the web server says, ah, oh, I need database information from that database. It sure. pulls it up and renders that. So we're able to see that because we see those connections between those servers being made. We also can see that a given server might be residing on a given ESX host, mm -hmm. right? Or we might understand that it's on a certain EC2 instance if it was in Amazon. So we're understanding both how our systems communicating with each other and what is the underlying infrastructure they rely on. And if they're relying on underlying infrastructure, uh, in this case, we actually see a node here, the shared storage is shared between the two. There is actually uh, n notifications, events coming back that that data store is below par and it's not running how it should. So these contextual relationships are very important mm -hmm. because these are things that are gonna let folks understand what is the service impact, right? Mm -hmm. If this data store has a problem, is that ultimately impacting my e-commerce site. It's going to also help us drive automations. So we can do remediations, self-healing sort of operations right. once we understand the cause and effect between different systems in the environment. Uh, 
being able to quickly isolate where is the problem coming from, uh, solve that problem, reduce MTTR. It also helps us tie into things like CMDBs, mm -hmm. where we can do incident enrichment. So not only can we say there's a problem on this, but we can then add additional information related to the context. Right, right. So it'd be helpful for someone who's investigating an issue to know that the storage is being shared both by the web server and the database server. Or, Absolutely. Um, I would imagine that you know uh, this would also help with uh, reducing the noise that people are experiencing, and we hear all the time that yeah. too many incidents, too many events, that this would help in that area. And that's as well. one of the things we do. This topology that you see actually helps us reduce the noise. So we try and bring only the most important notifications to the surface and ignore a lot of the other things that are out there because we understand that context. Right. So context is key, right? Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, John. Thanks for sharing. And uh, please stay tuned for one of our next videos. Um, and if they want any additional information, where can they go to find more? You go to sciencelogic.com. All right. Great. Thanks, John.